Hi, this is Mike Brightman with Bright Ideas Consultants, the Google SketchUp Authorized Training Center. Let's take a quick look at how we can create something out of nothing using geomodeling techniques in Google SketchUp. So when you first get a call from a client, it's helpful to locate their address and see what kind of information is available. So first I'll go to File, Geolocation, and choose Add Location. And for this location, we want to enter 1634 Lombard Street, Philadelphia, PA. We'll click Search. And so that's going to come up with this address here. So you can see it's already on my screen. And we want to back out one click here so we can grab some more of the context and the surrounding area. So I will click on Select Region and then adjust my grips. I click and drag on those pins and we can scoot this around. Maybe I'll make sure I grab that playground. This is the, the building that we're concerned with here and we want to learn more about. And I'll make sure I'll grab that intersection as well. So we click on grab and that's going to import into SketchUp the aerial imagery from that location. So not only does it pull in the aerial imagery, but it also pulls in 3D site terrain. So if we click on the toggle terrain button, you can see that you know, it's just wiggling a little bit there. There's not a whole lot of grade change. But if I was to go to View Hidden Geometry, I can turn on my hidden geometry, and then you can see how the site has been triangulated to create that, that topography. So not a whole lot of grade change going on there. So we can turn off our hidden geometry. And then let's make sure that we're working with a flat site. So first step here. Uh, we want to reset our axes so that they're in line with the building that we're working on. So I'll click on my axes tool and then I'll set these right at the front bottom corner and align it with that front edge and three clicks and that looks pretty close. This imagery is not extremely high resolution but that's about where we want to be. So now I'll use my rectangle tool to trace that footprint. So we're going to trace this guy like that and then I think I'll also trace this building here. And I'll delete that intersection and then let's pull this up by about 30 feet. Now we have our building mass, our footprint, but we really don't know how tall that building is. So what we can do is uh, right click on a surface and choose add photo texture. And that's going to launch our Street View Photo Texture window. And I'm going to resize that. And so now if I just look around here, um, you can see that on this Lombard Street, I need to be, let's see, turned around like this. There's the playground. Okay, and here's the building that we're working with. Sometimes if you squeeze down the Street View window, it helps to kind of zoom out a little bit but we need to move down the street a little bit to get a better shot of the front of that building and I'll squeeze this down just a little bit more okay so here's the the building that we want to capture I'll click on select region and then I can click and drag those grips from the middle and reposition them and I want to click and drag those grips now on the four corners of the building in the street view image so we'll click and drag those down. Okay, then we'll click on grab and then I'll minimize this and you can see that we've pulled in that that street view imagery there. Alright, so we can continue to work like that. Uh, we can select this surface and we'll move down the street and we need to uh, gather a different view here. I'll turn over like that. Select a region and then we'll just position our pins on the four corners of the surface in the image. And this is kind of a, a loose a sketchy model so it's, it doesn't have to be perfect so we'll grab that and then it shows up on the four corners of that surface in my model. And we can do one more here. Uh, it would be pretty easy to grab this texture. So 
so the four corners of the image and then when I click on grab oops let me undo that control Z I need to select this surface first select my region and click grab and then that applies to that surface so we'll do one more uh, we can grab this guy here this uh, long surface uh, headed back away from the street and let's see so probably this is about as good as the view gets here uh, we can maybe zoom in a little bit and select the region and then again the four corners so we're gonna put it in the four corners of the rectangle so we're gonna disregard the roof pitch right now so we'll do that so I have put the f the four pins in the four corners of that rectangle and then I'm gonna click and drag on that top axis bar and make sure that I include the the roof pitch and then want to make sure that we select this surface and click on grab and now that's enough for the street view imagery so what we need to do though now is uh, when we look at that street view imagery uh, we can go back to that dialog box and and you can see that the street view from the street view imagery we can get an idea of height so uh, you can see that it's about uh, half a story here so maybe let's call that three feet and then um, we'll say another uh, three stories on top of that so we'll say one two three so let's call this 33 feet high so I'm gonna go back into my SketchUp model and I'll triple click to select all connected geometry and then this is a little trick with the scale tool uh, if I click on the scale tool and I scale about that top axis as I'm scaling uh, we don't have to give it a scale factor we can also tell it tell SketchUp how tall we want that building to be overall so I'll type in 33 feet enter and so now if I measure from the bottom to the top that's exactly 33 feet and again this is just an approximation based on the uh, imagery that we're seeing there so next I'm gonna draw in um, we want to get this roof pitch on but you can see that the roof pitch it starts like right there so I actually need to tweak this texture so I can right click texture position and I want to stretch the corners of my rectangle there to meet the top of this surface so it needs to be just a little bit taller and then I can right click and say done so in order to tweak a texture you just right click on it and choose texture position and you can see that I have these yellow pins if you're seeing the fixed pins you just right click and uncheck your fixed pins fixed pins are good for tweaking textures typically but not really geo modeling photo textures it's better to use the uh, unfixed pin so I can right click and say done now I can build this roof in here let's go uh, let's actually just go straight up like this and just draw that roof in and then I'm gonna use my paint bucket tool hold down alt and sample this material by clicking on it and then apply it up there and you can see now that you know, this needs to uh, come straight down a little bit and then it looks like uh, we could maybe come across like this as well so it's kinda hard to see exactly what that roof is doing uh, now I'm going to push pull that across get rid of my extra line there and then we can use our paint bucket tool again sample the projected texture on the ground and paint it on our roof and we'll paint it on this roof as well and then I can go around here and maybe just clean up a little bit of this extra geometry alright so now another trick for geo modeling is when you end up with these trees in your picture you can always right click texture and edit the texture image that's going to automatically launch in your default image editor so now we can zoom in on this guy and what I like to do is use Photoshop and just select a, a range of um, you know of the wall that looks good so like that chunk there looks pretty good and then I can just make a copy of it up here and then so I'll just make a copy of that 
sentence. And then use your eraser tool with the right size brush. And it makes it a little bit easier to kind of blend that stuff in. Okay, so just kind of Photoshop out some of those trees, and then I might just grab like another piece like this, and we're going to copy and paste that, and let's move that up to the top, maybe scale it a little bit to just stretch it out, and then again with my eraser tool, if I just kind of trim that up a little bit helps it blend in. So it's not always perfect, but um, it definitely looks better than having a bunch of trees uh, completely overtaking your building. And then I'm going to smush that down one more. I, I'm hitting Control E. That's the keyboard shortcut for merging layers. Yeah, so we'll put this right there. Go back to our eraser tool and just Soften those, and soften those. Okay, so now when I control E, merge those layers, close this, and save it, it's going to automatically, uh, we want to make sure that we're saving this as a JPEG or a PNG. Let's see. Typically, it's a JPEG. We'll overwrite that file and saving it at 10 is fine. And so there's our updated texture. So now in, in SketchUp, we now have this updated texture without those trees. So it, it is pretty easy to get rid of all that extra stuff that's going on. And as far as the geo model goes, that looks a little bit better. Um, you can also do kind of a cool Photoshop type technique um, in SketchUp. So if I draw this rectangle here, I can right click and choose uh, Make Unique Texture. And what that does is it takes this piece here and basically crops it out of that overall wall surface. So now if I was to sample that, I can paint it onto the other side of the building. And even though it's not an absolutely perfect texture, it really helps give the overall look of a complete model. So we really wouldn't even be seeing these sides anyway, but kind of helps to just finish up that model. All right, so now that we have our geo model constructed and it's accurately scaled uh, based on the height and the footprint, uh, we can always save that. Uh, so we'll go to Control S and save that as 1634 Lombard Street. And we'll replace that file. I've already kind of worked on that. And then one last comment about creating these geo models, um, you know, it's so fast you can create the context and uh, get a complete idea of the project you're working on. And so whenever you get a call from a client, it's nice to just type in the address and go and check out that uh, site and see what information is available because you can really pull a lot of a lot of information out of just about zero effort. You know, we don't have to go to the site, we don't have to go take pictures. Uh, we have our context model, our our as built model, and we're ready to maybe do a few sketch designs. Um, and then you can always preview that in Google Earth as well. So if you click on this preview in Google Earth, it'll launch this model in there. And then you can really view your design in the context of the real world. So uh, we'll resize my window and it's going to launch that model in Google Earth. So there's our export and then we automatically fly in. So there's our geo model in context, and now you can see uh, if there's any 3D buildings around, which it might just take a moment for uh, Philadelphia to load those in. 
All right, well, thank you very much. Uh, this is Mike Brighton with Bright Ideas Consultants signing off.